You kind of get molded into becoming a, a killer in a way, you know? You kind of get molded into becoming this thug, to become the baddest gang member. There's a lot of sharks always waiting. You can't be a guppy out there. How do you reduce this big shark to going back to a humble guppy? It's kind of hard, you know? But it's not, it's not impossible. Same old, same old. My name is Javier Chavez. I'm 35 years old. I was born in LA. You're gonna go, right? Huh? You're gonna go. Thomas? Thank you. Just do it, you know. For the past four years, uh -huh. I've been working at Humble Industries. I'm gonna leave you in charge of the team out there. I'm gonna go with you guys. My job is, is a navigator. It's kind of like mentor people, navigate them through recovery. Any class you see interested in, homie? What's going on today? Anger management. There's no uh, any or anything after that? Nah. Yeah, give me anger management. At 12. Young and clean. Nah, I'll, I'll go to the anger management. All right. That's Joe's class. I don't know. I just got to keep the 100. Natural, man. Oh, it's regular. It's regular, big dog. It's regular. Big dog. I run two two classes here at Homeboys. One is a 12-step book study through the book on Narcotics Anonymous, right? And um, what I try to do is uh, a lot of the Homeboys and the Homegirls are not hip to the recovery world, you know what I'm saying? Or they look at it like just getting clean. And recovery is more than just being clean, man. And the book of Narcotics Anonymous or Alcoholics Anonymous talks about how to live that life, you know? They consider recovery a lifestyle all about choices, learning how to live life with coping skills so that you can prevent yourself from going backwards and relapsing. And so the book, what we try to do is break it down. It's just a tool. I look at it like a tool, like a carpenter takes his belt with his hammer, his chisels or whatever it is. The information here is a tool that goes in your belt, your recovery belt. It's a great thing. How's everybody doing? <coughs> cool, cool. And so we're on the title of connecting to others, right? And, and, and I think it's an important one because throughout your whole journey in recovery, man, sometimes the best thing you can do is connect with others, man. Relate to others, talk to others. Because sometimes when you're doing it by yourself, you know, for me, and I'm just using my experience, I usually make mistakes based on choices, right? I don't know if anybody struggles with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We get so comfortable with the bad that when good comes, we turn around and we destroy it because we don't know how to deal with it. And, 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 and you know, they talk about, about a new way of life. You know, walking to a new way of life. And basically, for me, that's what it was. Because I wasn't used to living out here in a free society. But, that's fine, homie. Thank you for your sharing, bro. Anybody else? Is that that's true. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's true. That's that's true. Cause I'm so used to doing my own thing on the street that I'm not worried about no responsibility. My addiction, like, doesn't only manifest in getting loaded. It manifests in stealing because that's just another adrenaline for me, you know? What? I don't know. Like, I really want to stop, but how is it? It's hard. Like, it's really hard to stop stealing. You're taking for the store, but you're burning yourself. Yeah. You're burning the story, but really you're burning yourself, man, for the ability to know what freedom feels like from the, your own personal self-obsession. You know what I'm saying? But that's why you got to keep doing the work, man. You got to keep putting in the work. Like, that's the importance, man. You guys make wise choices this weekend. 
Don't forget the trading game. Woo! Don't forget, man. So don't forget what? the trading game. If you make a up choice, you might be trading your freedom oh, to yeah. being locked up, your partner yeah. for that yeah. Sally, yeah. the good food out here for that yeah. food in there, right? Yeah. You guys have a good weekend, homies. Ten years ago, I probably had a lot of people hating me, man. I was a soldier, willing to do whatever, whenever. Spent about 23 years of my life in active addiction, gang banging. Like my life was on the line, pretty much type stuff, you know? I got shot right here one time. Right in this driveway, just, just standing here, cars pulled up. Didn't even say nothing, just let off. Boom, 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 boom. Crazy. Homies got, got killed right there, got shot right there. And it's all been right here in this little sector, all within this sector, man. So much has happened. You can still tell that there's still warfare going on out here. Like somebody, you know, you can see the neighborhoods riding right here, enemy territory, they whacked them out. They crossed them back out, and you can see behind they put killer. As they're walking out the neighborhood where I come from, right? These street signs right here. Good to have. It was all for that, for that blue sign right there. Like at the end of the day, no matter what, you gotta die for this. When I finally got to a place of, of understanding that, you know what, man, maybe this is not it. This is not what I want no more. You know, I want, I'm, I'm seeking for bigger things. It was hard for me to just turn my back on reality. I watch people, I get triggered and I start thinking like, it's gonna go down. Hey, what's up with this car? Is it gonna pass by shooting? Because I seen so much and I see how grimy things can get out here sometimes. I'd rather keep my guard up because I want to live life today, man. I enjoy it, man. Like, you know, I look forward to seeing my daughter. I look forward to talking to my son. I look forward to seeing family. So I know that if I'm gone, I'm not going to see that no more. You know what I'm saying? Anybody with the radio, anybody with the radio, you got eyes on Anthony Anderson. He just negative to the lobby, he just negative. Copy, I got him right here, I just see him right here. Anthony, what's up, big dog? Uh, I'm just hanging out waiting for Becky. All right. So the man I just called him, he said he wants to meet you to see if you like it and you want to take it, right? Just tell him, just hold tight. We'll be there. We'll be there. As a gang member, you know, you pick up your gun at 14. Yeah. And that's what you grow up fantasizing about. Like, I can't wait to catch an enemy because I'm going to play the guitar on his ass. You know, right. I'm going to air this nigga out. And, and you devote yourself to this game. Right. This is like a downward spiral, man. Like, like, just that quick, just in the, in the, in the blink of an eye, you know, young niggas turn into murderers, life dope dealers, convicts, and like, you, you learn like compassion is for the weak. Like, love don't love nobody, you know. I'm a firm believer that people grow in discomfort. This is you, man. This is your journey. This is where it all starts. This could be the new beginning if you just humble up, keep an open mindedness to it. I was addicted to crystal meth, smoking weed every day, PCP. You know, I was gang banging, gang like gang banging drugs. You know, 
Like, you know, gang members, they do this to people. You know? And, and it's almost like, okay, we're not doing this no more. We're gonna like, go to work. Right. We're gonna go to college. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're gonna get those tattoos removed off your face. Like, you know? Right. And it's gonna be all right. And somebody telling you that, and then you be like, are you sure, bro? Are you sure, homie? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I'm sure it's going to be all right, man. If he's the ex-gang member, he's welcome. If he wants visitors or whatever, family members and all that, I would appreciate giving everybody the space here. He can go visit. But them at the, the home, their home, I, that's what I'm asking. He would be the third and no more people. Oh, that's the only people that live in this? That's it. All right. So, let me explain the get down to him, and let me, let, me, let me see where he's at. How you feeling with here? It's cool? You good? Nah, man. For one, they said I was only going to be sharing a room with one other person. It's two other people in there, not I one. I think you're only sharing with one, they said. It's two, it's two people sharing the room. It's three of us in one room, in one little ass room. It's like hard, like like I feel institutionalized, bro. I feel it in like when you could you get all these guys. They're on like, the same road that you're going in, baby. Yeah, but it was like they bombarded me and like like don't f with none of my. Sh Where you from? Where you from? Don't f with my. Sh don't stand over me while I'm sleep. I don't know what kind of like weird little sh people be on. I don't know these people. That's what's the rules? What's the what's the politics? What's going on? There's you none know? of that. It right here, big dog. But, I, I, but, I, 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 but you know, Javier, I respect you to the fullest. Oh, yeah, and, and, and I'm not trying to be like, talk like, like hostile, but, or, or to you at all. But I'm just trying to let you know, like, I don't know how to express myself. Like, you know? No, I get that piece, man. I, I Trust me, I understand the whole concert, dog. But you got to understand one thing, that this is a process and a journey of change, homie. This is not prison. This is not the county. These guys are not active on that lifestyle. This is a sober living in an environment where you try to maintain yourself sober from anything. Come on, you got it? Yeah. So here. Yeah. Go ahead, get up, go up. Hey, where's the restroom? Right behind. All right. Hey, huh? I just want you to know I'm proud of you, dog, for hey, taking that big step, homie. Hey, right. I, I appreciate it, man. I, pre I'm, I, I appreciate you helping me, like, because if you wasn't here to, to mediate, like, or to, like, I would have took a whole lot of shit the wrong way, bro, off time. And I, for the manager, they're cool, huh? They straight. <laughs> Hey. All right, thank you, Eddie, man. Man, you got it, man. Right. Give me a chance. Trip, man. They gave me a chance, bro. So right. hey, I'm right. no different than you. Right before we always take people, like usually we gotta make sure that they're ready for what they're asking for, right? Because it's not what we think that you need, it's what you're telling us that you need. He said he was ready, he was willing to do whatever it takes as we take him. But then after that, he just never went back, left the stuff there. Came back to homeboys a few days later and started the cycle again back out here, you know? They're killing me, bro. So what? Like, I got pneumonia, I think. Like, I done got hit by a car trying to be on time here. I'm telling you, God, no, I know I'm going to do some crystal tonight because I ain't going to be one of them sitting on these bus stop tires. Right, right. All night. That's out. Man, you know what I'm saying? Driving me back to my addiction.
if you're a drug addict like the way I was, it's hard, man, to say I'm done or I'm gonna walk away from this. That's one of the hardest choices I ever had to make in my life. I love the adrenaline of the lifestyle, the rush of just being out there. Addiction took me downhill fast for years. I think people probably criticized me, probably said, man, this guy's gonna OD. Man, this guy's like, he's scum of the earth. I just didn't have the courage to, to take that flying leap and walk away from what was holding me down. It was, it was chaos. I kind of felt that I was gonna wake up and I was gonna find him dead. There was like a lawnmower. I was just chewing up anything that came my way. Like a tornado, everything was coming with it. I've heard a lot of people on the route, people that weren't even my family at the time, the people that just came into my life. I'm proud that I'm standing here and not there, you know, on that level. But it's still in me. This hasn't gone nowhere. I can become that in about a matter of an hour, maybe 30 minutes. I can become him again. Not giving up on him, I think, was one of the hardest things of my whole relationship with him. And I think that's what drained me the most. It took a long time for him to get sober. All right, thanks. It took a long time for him to accomplish different things, but he's doing it. Even if being a father to her is the last one, one day he is going to be that father that I want for my daughter. I wish they had roller coasters out here. That what? I said I wish they had roller coasters out here. Roller coasters out here? Yeah. Are you ready to get on roller coasters? Yeah. We'll take you to Magic Mountain. I've been in that one already, huh? It's so fun. Wait, MJ, hold up. I think it'll go down from here. No help. No help. No help? No. Careful. Look, look to the sides, because the people will be passing by with the bikes. There. I did it. You did do it. They're so close to us. Me, I'm just on guard. I feel like, damn, am I putting my, my family in danger if they go outside with me? You want to go all the way to the bottom, by where the water's at? Yeah. Then we'll walk like this, look. Can we go now? If somebody was to, like, shoot me or something, I'm always thinking it's going to happen because I've experienced that a few times. But so when I go out with them, I don't know, like, if I ever run into somebody, how would they react, you know? You don't want to get your feet wet? I do. Okay, so you got to get just a little bit closer, MJ. Cover a little water. I know you're Nah, that one's not going to make it. It would be a shame, dog. They're sad to die like what you're already starting to live like. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, yeah. I've seen it happen to a lot of people that have tried something different. I don't trust this water, it's cold. Don't be scared. This water is cold. Go, oh, NJ. If I do something to somebody and they see me, they might not forgive. I might have been put that already <laughs> way back in the past. I might have even worked through that in my personal work and through recovery, like writing about it. 
But I can't say that he's going to react the same way. Some people in life don't let go of certain things. What then, right? Good morning. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about embracing the challenges, and obstacles, and focusing on the things that's in the dark. Um, without your struggle, there will never be no progress. Every day I struggle. I think about a lot, and a lot goes through my mind. It's a lot of things that's in the dark that we don't focus on. A lot of things that's in darkness that I don't focus on. I know within me I got this disease, this disease of anger, aggressiveness, not forgiving those who hurt me. But now I know how to, I learned how to love, I learned how to forgive, I learned how to be thankful. You know, just for me, I never thought I'd be a California certified wildland firefighter. I never thought that I'd be getting on parole this year in October. I never thought that I'd come this far. I never thought that I'd still have my freedom. I never thought that I'd be able to get these tattoos removed off my face. I never thought that change was possible. I'm not saying that, that I'm perfect, but all you gotta do is keep striving, keep doing the best you can. Without focus on oneself, you can't be a great father. Without focus on oneself and focus on this emotional pain, you will never be where you are, because eventually you're gonna fall. And that's one thing I have to learn, uh, learn today. I'll never be where I want to be if I don't focus on myself. Thank you, and that's my thought of the day. As I'm on this little journey of trying to become a better person, like, I fall short sometimes, man. That's my reality, that I fall short. Every time I bring my past into my present, it derails me bad. So I gotta stay focused with the new tools I got. Not that long ago, I wanted to do something that I was probably gonna regret for the rest of my life, man. Some information. I got it back to me. It was people that were close to me, man. You know, right away, man, right away, like my mind just, it went back to the old me. Because I'm thinking like, if you wanna hurt me, then you wanna do something bad to my kids. <laughs> He's in a picture. For like about a week, I was riding dirty, you know? Riding with my, with my guns and stuff and just debating, should I do something, should I not do something? Should I just go over there, and, you know, and do my thing to these fools, you know? And, and I was thinking like, this is exactly what people sometimes come to me about. And here I am in a situation where I can't even listen to my own self. Like all these, these, these tools that I got, I can't even pick them up, you know? It was scary, dude. I love you, mommy. Bye. Bye -bye. I returned what I had borrowed from some people, firearms and shit like that. So it felt like I was able to breathe again, dude. When the night ends and I'm settling down and stuff, try to look back at my day. Did I do anything today to hurt anybody? Did I do anything to help somebody today? At the end of the day, I just wanna do my part in life, that's it. That's how I make my, my amends with the world, man.